Welcome to this special All Things Advent Wreath episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. I'm Taylor Burton Edwards, Liturgy Man with Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church. I'm your apportionment dollars at work to help you strengthen worship and the understanding of worship where you are. Today I'll be answering a whole lot of quick questions about the Advent wreath that I've been getting over the last couple of weeks as we approach the season of Advent here shortly. The first question is, where do you put the Advent wreath in your worship space? Basic answer to that is put it somewhere where it can be seen, but it does not block either the sight lines or any traffic lines to the truly focal elements of Christian worship. What do I mean by that? Well, basically what I mean is the Advent wreath is actually a kind of accessory for the season of Advent. It's not really a focal point of worship. It's something you're adding into, uh, but not in order to become its own focal point, but to sort of add accent, if you will, to help everyone understand, yes, we are in Advent now. So don't put it right in front of the Lord's table or right in front of the pulpit or right in front of the lectern or right in front of the baptismal font. Put it someplace where it will be able to be seen but not detract or distract from other uh, more focal elements in Christian worship. Second question is, what color candles ought we use? Well, simple answer there is, what color of, of paraments do you have for Advent? If you're using blue paraments, consider using blue candles in the Advent wreath. If you have purple paraments, consider using purple candles in the Advent wreath. Third question, in what order should the candles be lit over the course of the four Sundays in the regular season of Advent? Answer, it doesn't really matter. You can start anywhere, you can end anywhere, particularly if you're using four candles of the same color. I just simply recommend that, you know, pick a direction that you're going to light them over the course of the four weeks, clockwise makes sense to me. And then, you know, light them in that order over the course of those four weeks. If you're using a pink candle, then it does matter a little bit, if, especially trying to go clockwise. You start two positions counterclockwise from that pink candle as the first one you light. And then so that when you time you get around to the pink one for week three, you're lighting it in clockwise order for all four of them. Next question is, what do you do and when do you light a thing called the Christ candle? Well, the first question is, do you have a Christ candle in your Advent wreath? Does your Advent wreath have a position for four candles just for the four weeks of Advent? Or does it also have a fifth one in the center, perhaps for a larger pillar candle that might be white? It might be called a Christ candle. If you have a Christ candle, that is not lit during Advent proper at all. You wait until Christmas Eve to light that one. And then typically the standard practice for the use of Advent wreaths ecumenically is that you actually replace all four of the purple or purple and pink or blue and blue or blue, or blue and pink uh, candles on Christmas Eve with four white candles and you light all of them. You might start with the one in the center and then light the other four from that, however you want to do it. Next question, who should light the candles and when should they do it? Well, here's where I'm going to get to a bit of meddling. For the sake of good flow in worship, I really recommend that you actually light the candles that you're going to light for a given service during the prelude that you have experienced acolytes like them, people who know what they're doing around a, a candle lighter, um, and that you not wait to light the candle until someone else is there reading it. And, and you don't ask those people who may not be experienced candle lighters in your space, much less working with a new, a new piece of equipment like an advent wreath that they may not be used to having used before to do it then. It just slows everything down. It can be very awkward. Um, light them as part of the prelude and have the acolytes uh, who are experienced at lighting candles do that so that 
there is no distraction from worship caused by this. If you're going to have some sort of special reading or devotional related to the Advent wreath, just do that reading part. Don't add lighting into it. That just makes it all the much, much harder. The important thing is not lighting that candle. The important thing is calling attention to what we're doing in worship. The Advent wreath reading should really have the function of a kind of uh, devotional focus moment call to worship and to put on top of it an expectation that you'd be lighting candles at the same time where these people are going to be doing it while they're doing this. It just it just mucks it all up. It's just not not the best idea in the world. So have your acolytes do that during the prelude. Finally, when do you take down the Advent wreath? You take down the Advent wreath kind of depending on how you want to use it. You can either take it down at the end of Advent, at the end of the Advent 4 service, or if you want to continue using that wreath during Christmas season, you can leave it up, but as I suggested earlier, make all the candles white and light them all for every service during Christmas season. So those are my quick answers to a bunch of quick questions I've gotten recently about Advent wreaths. Hope this has been helpful. Remember, you can always contact me, worship at liturgyfolks.com, through UMC Worship Facebook group, or drop a line on this page. And perhaps your question or comment will become the basis for a future episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. In the peace of Christ, be always with you.